Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. I really am very gratified by the fact that so many of you are enjoying this series as much as I am making it. I kind of see the point. I mean, not because I'm doing it, but because these are sort of like short peppy talks where we only have to deal with one version of something. And I think that tells us something about the classical music marketplace, doesn't it? I mean, we all love the fact that we can get 550 billion recordings of the works that we love the most. But on the other hand, <laughs> I mean, what are you actually going to listen to when you have time to listen to something? You're not going to listen to 530 billion recordings of it. You want one. You want your go-to. And so I, I can only give you my go-tos and, and share them with you. And, and I am delighted that you find that to be a useful concept. I really am. I think it's wonderful. And I thank you all for your um, attention and support and encouragement of this, because I can do this forever. I mean, really, I mean, I'm not saying that as a threat. I'm just saying that there's a lot of great stuff out there. And I'm going to have a very, very good time going through hundreds of these things over the years that I hope will be together. And I, I've made a special Dave's Faves playlist, which is at the bottom of each of these things, so that you can go and sort of riffle through them at your leisure. And now we're going to talk about Mussorgsky's Pictures in an Exhibition, that all-time fave. And I have to say, this, this is really, there are so many wonderful recordings of Pictures in an Exhibition. I mean, there just are. I, I've talked about a dozen of them. And in my series on conductors best, so many conductors did their best work in pictures in an exhibition. I think part of the reason is because Ravel's orchestration, which is the one we're talking about, is just so fabulous. It's so perfectly matched to the music. I know, I know some other people have done them and Russian people, and people said, oh, it doesn't really sound Russian. It's not this, and it's not that. And who cares? Great orchestration is great orchestration. I mean, it doesn't make any difference that Mussorgsky would never have scored with the kind of subtlety and sophistication typical and characteristic of Ravel. Ravel was just unbelievable at this sort of thing. And, uh, you know, it allows orchestras and conductors to show off at their very best. And, I mean, you know, what more do we want? Seriously. If, if you want to create the opportunity for people to dazzle, and I don't care whether you're talking about a Mozart symphony or, or even like Schumann, who wasn't very good at orchestration, they all want to dazzle, and Ravel really knew how to do it. And of all of the people who are prime at dazzling, no one was better at it than Eugene Ormandy in the Philadelphia Orchestra. This is unquestionably, in my point of, in my, in my opinion anyway, the best pictures in an exhibition out there. There are lots of others, as I said. I mean, we've talked about some of them. Giolini did a great one. Uh, Kuchar did a great one. Slatkin did like three or four great ones. Uh, it, you know, it just goes on and on. Sinopoli with the New York Philharmonic is terrific. Uh, you, can, you can do this endlessly. Zell, Reiner, pick your conductor. They all did pictures at an exhibition, and most of them, if they knew what they were doing, did very, very well by it. But this one, I still think, is special. It is special for the quality of the playing, which is simply extraordinary, with every single solo part and section of the orchestra excelling itself. It is special for Ormandy's pacing of the work, which doesn't doesn't go to extremes of tempo and insanity to try and draw attention to itself, but rather is incredibly cohesive. It just has flow from beginning to end, and it rises effortlessly to that final climax at the great gate of Kiev. It is special for the Sonics, believe it or not. You know, Sony in Philadelphia, or Columbia in the day, was, was always an iffy proposition. Some things sounded really good, some things sounded lousy. They couldn't record in the Academy of Music, which was a very dry sounding hall. But for some reason, in this performance, they really got it right. I mean, they just they just did. In the Great Gate of Kiev, when you have that those final huge 
crashing chords with the chime and the tam-tam underneath, marked vibrando, by the way, by Ravel, because he wanted resonance. I mean, nobody sounds as good as this. They just don't. I don't know. There's something about this recording that catches the sonic essence of the piece in a way that nobody has before. And, you know, Ormandy re-recorded it for RCA. I think he did it. Yeah, he did. Of course he did. And it didn't sound as good. I mean, it just wasn't the same. This was one of those moments where everything went right and the mics were on. And I just think for that reason, it's, it's extraordinary. And in this particular version, this is the French Sony version. I mean, it's out in all kinds of different, you know, formats. The, 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 probably the most common one you can find, um, if it's still around, there was a Sony, I don't know whether it was the Carnegie Hall thing or one of those other budget series, but it had Thomas Shippers uh, doing excerpts from Boris Gudunov, I think with George London. I mean, that it's on, it's on there too. So you could, you, you could find it. But the bottom line is with this one, you get Charles Munch doing the Ravel Vals Noble et Sentimental, also with Philadelphia, which is quite, quite the bonus in my view. I really think that was really kind of fun. And uh, thank you for French, to French Sony for putting this together. But however you get it, However you get it, this is just one of the great Ormandy Philly recordings and one of the imperishably great recordings of Pictures in an Exhibition in the Ravel version, and I just adore it. And when I want to listen to Pictures in an Exhibition, this is the one I pick. Nine times out of ten. I love some of the other ones. I mean, I have like you know, a couple of dozen recordings of the thing. And I admire those others. I like those others. If I put one on, I will enjoy it tremendously. But for my very own pleasure, what I want to hear it to the essence, the essence of what this piece expresses, this is the recording I go for. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.